Peace, love, and blessings. Peace, love, and blessings, everybody out there. It's Spirit with Allen Family Network. And today I'm going to teach you how to travel in peace and deal with police officers. And I'm reading this directly from our course and book bundle. You can use the link in the uh, bio below to grab that course bundle if you, if you need it. It's perfect for the everyday person, the everyday adult. And also it's perfect for the everyday teenager. And why not allow your children to learn how to operate on the road as well, the correct way. So you can grab that using the link below. And then let's get into it. So how to travel in peace and deal with police officers. So who needs to do the following this year? Or who wants to do the following this year? Who wants to drive in peace and confidence on the road with police officers? I know I did. Who wants to empower yourself? with their protocol so you know what they can and cannot do so now you know what they can and cannot do so you know their moves who wants to empower yourself with the right to ticket and report them just just like they do us you could do that too and also who wants to mentally equip yourself and your young drivers this is perfect for the you know for the young driver out there uh and then who wants to rebrand what a police officer is in your head so you'll never fear them again because i know coming from you know just um you know my culture and coming from where i come from um it's just like an underlying fear when it comes to police officers but if you're watching this video if you go through our course and read our book uh that won't be anymore and then also who just wants a step-by-step -step, like quick manual for dealing with police officers so if you're in a situation you pull it over you may you know you got your book you may want to skip you know go to a chapter to see how to deal with this situation it's good for that too so if that's if that's you you can grab once again you can get the course bundle the course and book bundle on this below using the link below and let's get into it let's get into it so once again i'm reading it directly from the book that's included in the course and you guys can grab that and let's get into it. So <laughs> what is a police officer? Here's the summary of what a police officer is. So the official name for a police officer is a policy enforcer. Whoa, police officer, policy enforcer. Wow, enforcing a policy. <laughs> the city hires them to enforce their policy, a.k.a. protect their property, like a security guard for a wealthy person's estate. So think about, you know, uh, if you've ever been to a wealthy person's estate or going to, you know, uh, a big a big co a chain store or corporation or whatever it is, and they have security guards there that's protecting the lands, they work the same way, but for the city or the area where they have jurisdiction, if that makes sense. So it's the, they're the same people. Don't let them fool you. But a, a police officer has the same rights as you, nothing more nothing less always remember that at the end of the day we're human we have certain rights that's inside of us the laws um and i'll say this before we get deep into this book i'm not an attorney i'm not anything like that i'll never be in that box if you need an attorney go get one i'm not an attorney i'm just telling it how it is and i have a mixed experience in anything that i teach so but um once again, the police officer has the same rights as you, nothing more, nothing less. So, you know, at the end of the day, we were born and we were given it's things that we can't do. Like, for example, I, I, I was given a right to blink. So they can't pass a law saying that I can't blink because I naturally was given that right. That's we call that a spiritual um, right. But, you you know, you can call it a human right as well. Like you have the right to certain things that it's, it's unalienable rights that no one can take away from you. So it's important to know that young person. It's important to know that adult, whatever it is. But the authority of a police officer comes from being hired to essentially, once again, make sure no one damages the lands and the property, etc., so basically, they're hired to protect that, you know, to protect the uh, lands, protect the property. That's what they're there for. Not to, you know, I know, you know, we think, but not to save the world or anything. So any authorities outside of the ones that was listed above used on you by a police officer is against the law unless you give them authority to. It's easier sometimes to take your ticket and take it to court if this happens. So if you you know if you're in a situation 
and you see once again not attorney this is me speaking just you know from my experience but if i'm in a situation and from there i'm pulled over illegally by a police officer or, or some or you know a police officer uh, does something illegal to me um a lot of times it's good instead of arguing with that person because I'll tell you this, like um, that person may not be the most competent when it comes to knowing the law. So instead of just arguing and going back and forth with this person right here, it's good to play it cool, take your ticket, and you can always battle it in uh, in court. So that's important to know too. Like it's cool, justice will be served. Just wait. <laughs> But police officers can be a bit hostile at times, but see through this persona and see that they are, before anything, human just like you. So once again, you know, it's a it's a, it's a pocket of people that I, I'm subconsciously talking to, but really I'm talking to the world, uh, if that makes sense. But once again, police officers can seem hostile. They're playing a the role. You know, they're, play, they're playing a role. It's like acting. So they have to have this persona. So they have to be this person and you just have to see through it and know what's real. Like, and once again, they're human, just like all of us. So if our goal is, is peace, if our goal is love and happiness, all these great things in life that then, you know, we have to look at, we got to see who people really are. Like this is a human at the end of the day, you know, even though they may have this, this title and fill this role and play in this position, like you're, you know, you're human, just like me. <laughs> But in a potentially fatal situation, do what you must do to protect protect yourself and your family. So once again, in a potentially fatal situation, do what you have to do to protect yourself and your family. And that's just being smart. <laughs> and also, too, that's something that's granted to you. So if you're in a fatal situation where, it, you know, all right, this is turning very illegal and I'm to the point like, I feel, you know, a fear for my life. Then from there, do whatever you have to do to protect yourself. So that's something that is, that's once again, that's a natural law, a natural thing that's inside of you. You know, for example, if you was getting attacked by a bear, would you sit and think about what's the law and what can I do with this bear? No, you're going to protect yourself in this situation. So it is what it is. But if you do not like the idea of policy and forces around you, everywhere you go, consider you can consider this real deal so if you don't like this current system and how they have policy and forces all around you or whatever it is you know um you have an option you got other options for one you can move out the country that's very simple to do you can move out the country you can find another system that better fits you or find another state where the policy and forces they don't have a, you know um to where the same problems are not happening like it's you got options. So you can move to another country where this is not a problem or you can create an idea to be the change. So once again, we forget this world. We have the ability to change and alter this world. So if you're debt compelled about the situation, you can create a movement for change and you can get these things changed. Like every day there's people out there that are like literally changing laws that they don't like, changing this, changing that. You can do that. This is your world. But what can a policy enforcer or a police officer uh, legally do? So when you think of a policy enforcer, think of a security guard at a school or a club. So that security guard, if you you know ever been to a school and you see that police officer right there, he's there to protect that property and the damages and you know uh, to make sure it's not damaged, essentially. So that's what he's there for. He was hired by that school to protect their stuff, if that makes sense. Just you can do the same thing with your house and your stuff if you want to. But a security guard at a club or a school, think about that. Also, they can only use physical force if you use physical force on them or put them in danger. The same thing, like I said, in any situation, protect yourself. They can do the same for themselves. And remember, every person in America has this right, but period, you have this right naturally. It's a human right to protect yourself if you're in a situation that could be fatal. But I'll continue. Tickets are against the law unless you damage their lands, 
or property, but this must be completed in a court or this must be, you know, you got to go through this in a court. So um, with tickets, they're very interesting because, you know, really, I'll just give you my opinion of tickets and police officers and violations. So this is my opinion and my experience. So basically, you know, um, how can I explain it? <laughs> it's they're essentially people who once again, they're inside of this role, and this is not for all of them, but for the bad ones that I'm talking about, or the ones that like to give people tickets and things like that for, you know, outside of damaging land and property and stuff like that, you know. But uh, but basically, these are people that um, they're the dun the dun, <laughs> like they take their job too seriously, and they're really acting, and they're inside of this role, and you know, uh, which you should just feel sorry for them because that's. Uh, I would call that I would call that an imposter disease, but I'll continue. But they're inside of this role, and they're once again they're acting this role and playing this role, and then tickets just in violations because it used to be as simple as hey, are they damaging the land? Are they you know um, you know are they damaging property? Are they really really hurting somebody? Like it used to be that, and then it progressed to hey, where's your tag? You know, your tag is expired. Here's the ticket. Or, hey, uh, you know, you're playing your, your, your music a, a bit too loud. Here's the ticket. Or you're five miles over the speed limit. Here's the ticket. Now, now that, that's extreme. And that's the things that you should battle those things, you know, because once again, we just got so much going on in the world. Why sit here and pester me over little things like that? But it just reminds me of if you, you know, being in school, and when they hired a what is it a, a you know a, a hallway monitor and from there the ones that took their took their position too seriously and was given you know given violations for everything like it works the same way but um in, in my experience and opinion take it to court like take that to court battle that in court because most of the time you know uh, you can get out of those like because it's not serious things there's a lot of serious things going on here like what is this but I'll continue. You have the same, you have the same exact rights if your uh, property or land is damaged by a policy enforcer or a person or any person. So if any person come through and they damage your property, your lands, you could for one, you could hire a security guard or you could hire, you know, a, whatever you want to call it. If you want to call it a policy enforcer, if you want to call it a me enforcer, if you want to call whatever it is, you can hire you can hire somebody and have them protecting your land as well. And if any person or policy enforcer damages your land, you could ticket them. You know, this is an actual violation. Hey, you caused me an actual damage. I got to pay to get this fixed. Now, something that you broke, I got to pay to get it fixed. I don't think that's right. I think you should pay. So that's when the tickets, you can do the same to them, just like they do to you. So state court, a.k.a. This is just my opinion and experience on state court. But state court, a.k.a. tax collections, or I call it middleman services for property and contract disagreements amongst people. So state court is you know uh, they're the tax collection and you can look at them as a middleman services for property and contract disagreements amongst people you both uh go back and forth until like so this is the court process the situation so you both go back and forth until one of you agrees on a ticket or a settlement for damages and the court creates the papers for you to agree to the decision so if i'm in court battling a ticket or whatever it is from there um, we're going to essentially go back and forth and which always um, what always make them prove um, what they're saying. So if you, you know, if you went past the speed, make them prove that, you know, but also too, like, look at some of these, look at some of the laws and like really see if some of these things are legal or not. You'll be surprised things that we follow every day mindlessly. That's not even legal, you know, but I digress. I would go into that and look into federal law too. So federal laws, that's the hierarchy of law. Now state laws and policies and all that stuff, that's the little baby stuff in my opinion. Federal law is that's that's it. But um remember, they can legally lie to you, but never say more than is necessary, especially if you notice them lying. So if you're in a situation and you're dealing with a um a police officer policy enforcer <laughs> as you know as their true name but if you're dealing with them and you notice them lying or trying to get you to lie 
from there, what you can do is just never say, and which I recommend this always, never say more than what is necessary, especially if you notice them lying. Um, the, rem the Remember this, the Miranda rights does not apply to you, but keep this in mind. It don't apply to you. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. It, do it don't apply. What can you do to a police officer legally? You can sue if your rights are violated. So you can take them to court and then you can prove that your rights is violated and then you can get a payout. And, you know, they may can, you know, they may be criminally liable. So they may can go to jail or something like that for it. And you get paid for your damage. And you go, go on about life. That's one thing you can do. You can legally ticket anyone. Remember, including a policy enforcer. If your property or lands are damaged by them and you can prove it. So if you can prove that they damaged, once again, you can prove that they damaged uh, some property of yours or broke any of your, you know, um, you know, once again, you, um, you know, um, damage anything of yours or, you know, harmed you in any way, etc. You can ticket them too. once again, you, you got proof of it. You got them. I mean, as simple as that. Because <laughs> that's essentially what they're doing to you. They're handing you a ticket. Yeah, that's the extra. And this, what is this paper? But really, that's them. You know, that's the that's the city suing you for something. They're suing you for a violation, essentially. And they want you to pay up. And this is how much they're saying it costs, you know, to fix whatever that you did. So if you went five miles over the speed limit. Here's what it's costing to fix their damage. <laughs> But all right, you do not have to communicate with a, a officer, but keep in mind this could lead to a hostile situation, which that has nothing to do with you. If they get hostile or not, they should be trained better. But you don't have to communicate with a police officer. In most cases, it is safer to remain silent because they are recording you as you should do to them as well. So, you know, if you're in a situation, just, you know, try to be as quiet as possible. Because you don't want any of your words being twisted or used. Because remember, really what's going on here is they're trying they're trying to sue you for something. You know, they're trying to find a way to get some money from you. Say your name and only do the following when communicating with a policy enforcer. I'm going to show you. You want to smile? Just smile. Why not? <laughs> Make you feel good when you smile. Smile, show respect, and use the magic words. Here they are. I do not consent to searches and I am remaining quiet until I speak with my lawyer. As soon as an encounter between you and a policy enforcer happens, you can use your voice memo to record the encounter or just get your phone like quickly. And, you know, so as soon as you see the lights or whatever it is, go on and put your phone on. You can actually record them visually. Or you can just record the voice. You can do a voice record as well. But you just want to record and document just in case. If they damage you, you got to have some proof to show that they did. So if you're not recording anything and you're just saying, oh, he did this to me, but you don't have any proof, then from there, I mean, did it happen or did it not happen? So it's always good to just record the encounter. You have the right in the situation to ask for their name and badge number. So... Uh, you definitely want to get that on the record, too. So, hey, you know, uh, how are you doing today? All right. So what's your name and what's your badge number? And that's that's important, too. So you can identify them, because once again, if you don't get their name, let's say you don't get their face, you don't know who they are. You have to identify them. What's your name and what's your badge number? And that's the same thing they're trying to do to you. They're trying to identify you because essentially they're trying to sue you. They're trying to find a way to get money from you. So they have to identify you, if that makes sense. But and uh, remember, only a prosecutor can charge you. So this policy enforcer in this situation, they can say that you did this or you did that or whatever it is. But that's whatever that that's up to debate. You know, that's up for debate. You, you know, that's that's cool. That's up for debate. So because. A prosecutor is the only one that can charge you. So go into court and then from there you can be charged for that thing based off of the evidence and documentation and all of that stuff. Then the charge can happen. But right now, nah, he, he you know, he can't he can't charge you for anything. So even if he's saying that you did something or whatever it is, that's alleged and, and that's to be continued. 
And then remember, you can always contact us if you'd like to just basically become a private or sovereign citizen with, uh, I call it special rules and laws that govern you like the rich. So basically, uh, we're a part of a system and we, we essentially signed up for this system. I won't go too deep into this, but we signed up for this system and we did it through our social security numbers and things like that. But you signed up for a system. So a system is a way you're basically agreeing to operate in this way with this system. And basically, they the system is done a certain way because the people that created it, they wanted to see a certain world for themselves, for their children, whatever it is. But as time go on, you know, there there's some people out there, they're not bad or good, you know, just be, you know, but they don't want to be a part of a system. Maybe they don't agree with some things, some parts of a system, maybe, or maybe they're to the point, hey, I want to create my own system. You know, I see the world being this way. You can do that, you know, and that's from there. If you're interested in, in learning about that stuff, going deeper into that world of kind of being independent outside of a system, which you, that's, you have a right to do that. Think about that. Like you have a right to, to, just, you know, do things the way you want it to be done, you know, but, but yeah, just also know that this system is voluntary. So you're agreeing to be a part of it. You can always do something else. But what to do if my rights are violated by policy enforcement? So uh, it's wise to record or voice record the encounter anytime you are illegally pulled over by a policy enforcer. But anytime you're pulled over by a policy enforcer, period, I would recommend and I think it would be wise to record everything. Always record everything. I would even I, I would even think it's wise to get a little camera put in your car just in case you know that automatically records that stuff. Make sure that you have a recording of the officer, once again, saying their name and badge number. That's how you can identify them. Focus on surviving the encounter. If it's, you know, period, just focus on surviving the encounter, getting in and out. Continue smiling and show respect and only communicate using the magic words, even if your rights are violated. Remember those magic words. Never say more than is necessary, no matter what, because this can lead to a legal arrest. So once again, in my opinion and experience, they're looking to sue you for something. They're looking to make some money off of you. And it's not personally against that police officer. It's just the way that um, I perceive the system to be built. So it's not a, it's not against him. It's just the way the system is built. So they're looking for violations. So it's just good not to say you know, more than is necessary because that can be used against you, you know, so, yeah. If physical force is used on you or you're being physically moved by an officer, it is important to do the following. So determine if it will be fatal or not first. So, hmm, is this getting fatal? Like, do I see him grabbing at his gun and doing things like that? Like, from there, hmm, this could possibly be fatal, you know, or... Does he appear to be drunk or or under the influence or whatever it is? Is he acting really, really irate? Like you have to evaluate that situation and see if you and, and trust yourself and see, OK, is this going to be fatal or not? If you get the feeling it will not be fatal, then allow as much as possible. And remember, this will guarantee you a big lawsuit that you can, you know, you can uh, collect off this in the end even though essentially you're being violated. But just learn uh, from my experience and opinion going through this life, it's going to be times where you are violated. And that's just life. We can't do nothing about that. Uh, but it's good to stand up for yourself when that happens. So stand up for yourself, as you know. But if it's to the point where it's easier just to, you know, so, and what I mean by violated, I'll give you an example. So let's say a police officer pulls you over and this police officer goes in your car and it's like, you know, for no reason, for one, doesn't have a warrant to go in your car or anything like that. But they go in your car, they're throwing stuff out, like intentionally, like just violating you. And I've seen this happen, you know, but to where they're throwing stuff out, they don't care about your stuff, like they're really violating you uh, from there. And that situation, you know, it's good to just like have that documented if possible. So to have it recorded or whatever it is and just let them let them do their thing, because at the end, this is going to be damages that you're going to collect on on top of more. 
And that's how you defend yourself. You know, that's the new way of defending ourselves. And that's how you defend yourself against a policy enforcer. It's by just letting that, letting that happen, letting that slide, give it a pass, but just know at the end it's going to be worth it. So, yep. If you feel like an encounter, once again, with a policy enforcer, is turning fatal. Remember, the law is on your side. Protect yourself however that is. If your rights are violated, remember you can sue or ticket for the inconvenience and you can get the officers fired and removed. We've seen that time and time again when when they're not following the law, when they're not following, you know, when they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They can be sued for that, which is a ticket. <laughs> you know, it's money being collected. They can be sued for that or ticketed for that for the inconvenience. And also they can lose their job as well. So, and then also, if you're in a situation, if you had a situation like this happen, contact us if you'd like to be advised on the next steps. If your rights have been violated and you want to sue, ticket, or have an enforcer fired and removed, you can contact us through email. So, info at allenfamilynetwork.com and we can discuss it, talk about it. What to do if a policy enforcer wants to search you or your property? Ooh. Policy enforcers can only detain or search you if you're involved in a crime at that moment. Always decline the search by using the following. I do not consent to this search. And you can say it calmly so you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to have to be wild or anything like that. Hey, I don't consent to this search. I don't consent to this. If an enforcer strip search you, they are by law supposed to be the same gender as you. So if you're a man and you're strip searched, it has to be by a man. If you're a woman and you're strip searched, it has to be by a woman, typically. During this time, they can search you and your property for a short amount of time. So if you're going, if you're going through this, going through a search or strip search or whatever it is, they can search you and your property for a short amount of time. Just let them do it, whatever. During this time, only say the following. Am I being detained? It's good to say that and get that on record too. So if you got a phone with you or whatever it is, just kind of, you know, you can have that with you and just have that being recorded. But they're supposed to record it on their, you know, on their devices as well. But, you know, it's good to have your own. If not, politely leave and remain silent. So um, if they say, hey, you're not being detained, then politely leave remain silent okay yeah they are not supposed to go in your pockets unless you have a weapon remember that they are allowed to search any room you go into do not leave bags open or they can assume you let them search so you zip close those bags or they can assume that you let them search it. Hey, they left the bag open, so I just looked right into it. I was assuming they let me search it because it was open. So just keep it closed. Close up all your stuff. What to do if a policy enforcer wants to arrest me? Remember that a policy enforcer can only arrest you if they have probable cause. If you're arrested, they can by law search you, your car, and your stuff. If a policy enforcer comes to your door with a warrant, walk outside and lock the door behind you so they don't go inside. If they have a warrant for your arrest, do not hide. Walk outside or they can force their way in, inside if they suspect you to be in there. So if they suspect you to be inside, they can force their way inside. So just walk outside, shut their door behind you and make sure it's locked. It is always easiest just to go with the flow, go with them without giving them an opportunity to search your property and your things. So just go with them. Remember, always remain quiet and only use the magic words that we've been that we've been saying throughout this whole thing. Those magic words are I do not consent to searches and I remain in quiet until I speak with my lawyer. Remember, if this is wrongfully done and they have violated your rights throughout this pro throughout the process you can sue slash ticket and have them removed by law stay strong and remain calm in life sometimes young person out there or you know adult out there or you know whoever 
It's going to be times in life where we can be violated. And it's cool just to, you know, keep it cool, keep it calm and just know that, you know, um, right now they it may seem like they won the race. But the marathon, the marathon, that's you. Just be calm, remain quiet. And from there, imagine the end goal. Imagine someone violating you. And from there, throughout it happening, you just kind of remain calm. You keep it cool. And then at the end, you sue them for, let's say, you know, $300,000 or $500,000 or whatever it is. You sue them for damages and violations. And then they're fired and they can't do their job again. Imagine that that sounds like you won the marathon. What to do if a policy enforcer wants to talk to me? Always remember the magic words. I do not consent to searches and I'm remaining quiet until I speak with my lawyer. Interrogations outside of the interrogation rooms look like a simple conversation. So interrogation, if you've ever seen that, you know, and in, in behind in, in, inside of an interrogation room where they're asking you questions and all of that. It looks like a simple conversation outside of that room. So basically a simple conversation can be an interrogation. But remember, they can use all of that against you. So I do not consent to searches and I remain in quiet until I speak with my lawyer. Beware, because any word you say can be used against you. Like I said, it's good to just, you know, sometimes to keep it quiet because every word can be used against you. If a policy enforcer asks you anything outside of your name and address, always reply with the magic words. And I'm going to keep saying this because this is really the principle of what I'm saying. Do not, I do not consent to searches and I'm remaining quiet until I speak with my lawyer. Using the magic words protects you from interrogation by law. So they get into asking you questions. Where are you? Who are you? What are you doing? You know, uh, did you commit this crime? Did you do this? You know, I do not consent to searches and I'm remaining quiet until I speak with my lawyer. After you repeat the magic words, they must by law stop asking you questions. They will usually stop because of their body cam recording as well. You know, they don't want to be like on camera, 4D, 3D violating you. So, hey, they'll stop. Sometimes policy enforcers lie or misquote in hopes of getting a confession from you. Remember that. Be aware of that. Stay silent and use those magic words. Follow these steps and you will receive always. I'll say this. You'll always receive justice at the end. Once again, remember, it's not a race, it's a marathon. <laughs> Keep in mind the following. You have power. I'm a big believer in peace and power. Never touch a policy enforcer or pass behind them. So there's just things to keep in mind. The, the policy enforcer does not decide a charge. They can only make recommendations. So remember that. The prosecutor is the only person who can charge you. Remember that one. Always keep these things in mind, too. But remember, most policy enforcers are trained to act superior to you. But keep in mind, they're not. So here's the role. I'm going to give you the role. You ready? So you got the bad cop role. So this is the aggressive one. This is the forceful one. You know, um, keep in mind, you, you and hopefully you don't experience this, but it's an act. These are actors, so keep that in mind. But you got the bad cop role, the aggressive, the forceful one. And then you got the good cop role. The, and this one is typically the same race and gender as you. So, and we've, we've probably seen that in movies and seen that happen where one is, to, you know, that's it's a mental game, but uh, that, it's acting. It's like a circus. <laughs> Even in jail, remember remember to only use the magic words and remain calm until the end, no matter what they say. If you are not locked behind bars, then you're technically innocent. Remember that. And then also, want to download the Right to Travel forms in our visual course for free? You can um, go to our shop to get that. So it's the Right to Travel forms. So basically, it helps you to travel through the lands. And I'll say this. There's a difference between traveling and driving. Did you know that? Traveling is a human right. You have the right to travel. Driving is a is is based is something that you it's a it's a privilege 
that you have to get. So it's throughout it's through the system. So you're a driver. Um, if you sign into that system and you agree to be a driver, so a driver, they're um, basically uh, a driver has a certain list of things that they can and can't do, and they can be ticketed for that. When you're traveling, that's a human right. You're just doing what you do. But yeah, you can grab those forms for free from our uh, site. Allen, you can go to allenfamilynetwork.com or use the link below. And you can grab those for free and check those out. Um, and remember, our country, our country is governed by the basic is governed by the constitution is governed by our human rights in general and also you know consumer rights things like that we have unalienable rights that cannot be taken away so these are things that we were born with so once again the right to blink that's just an example like no one could tell you can pass even if they pass a law saying you couldn't you can't blink like this is a right an unalienable right that can't be taken away from you Law is not taught in most public schools or in most police trainings, like basically the police trainings that they go through. They don't really teach them the law. They teach them protocol, how to stand, how to walk, how to look, you know, ignorance of the law costs. So it's important to know the law because ign ignorance of the law. And that's typically what's going on in a lot of these situations. It's just that most people, they think that this is a law. And just because this police officer who may not even know the law as well thinks that this is a law and operate as this is a law, even the police academy that they were trained with, they may not know the law. So it's ignorance of the law can cost because it's costing people every day. So just knowing the law gives you more power and more leverage than them. Just knowing the law, calmly, silently knowing the law. So police officers are policy enforcers. Remember that. Keep that in mind. They are hired by, hired by private corporations to ensure that the lands, property, and people of the private corporations are not harmed or damaged. So once again, a part of that little system, how it go. And remember, they're similar to a security guard at a mall. Constitutionally speaking, you have a right to travel as you please as long as you're not damaging or harming anyone. So outside of that, any any violation, any ticket outside of those things, you should really challenge those. And once again, look into federal laws and, and read about some of the rights that we have. So I know state laws can be different, but remember, federal, that's king. And then once again, this book will ensure that you're following the actual laws and help to educate you and police officers of the law in the future. So you can download this, this course bundle and get this book. You can keep it in your car and ensure your rights. So you can go to allenfamilynetwork.com to grab this entire course bundle. You can grab it for your team, which it would be wise, or you can grab it for yourself. You know, we never too old to learn. Honestly, most of us don't know what's really going on anyway, so it's important to learn. And yeah, so so basically that's essentially um the the summary of that course of the course bundle that course and book bundle just remember that and and once again look at some of those federal laws and and go deep in and see it for yourself but that's how basically you can travel in peace and that's how you can deal with police officers along the way as well and that i'm speaking from experience when i say the experience of doing these things in this book so you can take this and hold this as true and remember <laughs> I'm speared with Allen Family Network. I'm not an attorney. I'm not none of that. I'll never be in those boxes. You know, I'm I'm just your brother. I'm a person that's been through the experience and, and, and been through this stuff. And I'm just telling you guys my experience as well. But peace. I'm out.